Hi guys, it's Aaron and Mike here from Team Endgame, bringing you our new and improved deck breakdown. Hopefully it'll be a bit more informative and a lot less babble than our other one. Hey! <laughs> right, so to start with we're bringing you the Bermuda Clan, in particular the Pacifica deck. So I'll get started. Yeah, that's right. grade 3's. Grade threes. we've got obviously Pacifica. Run those in four. Obviously she's your main vanguard. The idea is that she can soul charge every turn, build up the soul for any effects you need to do. So to, clarif you, to clarify the effect, it's a... During your main, start of your main phase, you soul yeah. charge one, then you draw a card, and pick one card from your hand and put it to the bottom of your deck. Okay. So it allows you to manipulate your hand while increasing your soul for a lot of the effects. Mm -hmm. Which leads on to the next grade three, which is Kareen. Kareen is just literally a 10k swinger for most of the game. Right. But when she's returned to the hand from the field, you can counterblast one, which will allow you to soul charge and then draw a card. So whenever she's bounced from the field to the hand, you get her back, you soul charge one, fueling again for more effects, and right. you draw a card. Is there a main reason you're fueling? Oh, well, mainly is because of a lot of the a lot of the grey ones and the other effects that I'll come to in a minute. Yeah. Basically, require a soul blast in order to bounce the card back. You have the Mega Blast as well, but you're never gonna. Be honestly, you're never gonna hit it. It's a well, no, because it's a waste of Counter Blast, really. If you hold it back late game, but it does. It's, it's fine. It's a fine effect if you can get it off. But the fact that it's hit the Vanguard means it's a very hard. Yeah, so it calls three things from the deck if I don't, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, call three, three things from the deck to any rear guard, so you kind of basically get your two attacks out for it with that. Fair enough. Raid twos. We have one of the key cards of the deck. Pearl Sister Perla. Now she's a grade 2, 9k. When she hits the Vanguard, you can Soul Blast 1 and then bounce any card from the field to your hand. Right. So basically, she'd be one of your rear guards, obviously, but you're trying to hit the Vanguard and then you bounce a Kareen or any other card that you deem worthy to have back in your hand, like a 10k shield or something. Yeah. Next grade 2 is just your 10k Vanilla. Nice grade 2 ride. Yep. Also good to um, have the rear guard to go with stand triggers. And then the last two I run, which are Girls Rock Rio. She has the exact same effect as Kareen, but she's only 8k. So you believe the bouncing to be more sufficient than the things you bounce back, so to speak? I assume no, no, they need to be in some sort of balance. Okay. So since really the only things that do those, um, that you draw a card when they bounce, are Kareen and Rio. Right. I have six of them in the deck all together. Just those six there. It's not a lot, so you need to be able to try and get to them as quick as you can, but at the same time, you need to be aware that you need to be able to bounce them in the first place. Let me see what other bouncing cards you got then later on. Well, the other ones are in the grade ones. So we'll start grade ones. We'll go four perfect guards. Boots <laughs> <laughs> McGee! <laughs> Stop calling her that. Okay. <laughs> when you get the new perfect guard, the... Uh... It's still the same one. No, it's, just a it's different just, print. Yeah, different print. <laughs> Until then. So obviously, perfect card, standard. For Pearl Sister Pearl Pearly. Now that card's interesting. <laughs> Basically, she is a combo card of her, of Perla. Right. And a set of artwork that goes together. <laughs> Wrong way around. Yay, artwork. I like it when they do that. <laughs> anyway, um. Basically, what she is, she's brilliant. When you place her onto the rear guard, right. if you have a Pearl Sister Perla on yeah. the field, you can give an effect to that Perla, so which is a grade two. So you play the grade, play the grade two first, unless it's already there. Yeah. You play the grade one and apply it to the grade two. Yes, and that effect is when it hits the vanguard, you soul charge and then you draw. Right. And the best thing about it is this effect is stackable. So if you played three of those to that one Perla that you've got you were to soul charge and draw three times in that one attack, which I think is amazing. But your opponent usually guards it all the time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if they have any sense, yeah. They, that's, it's a very threatening grade two ride, if you get that off. Right, because a lot of your grade twos are eight and nine, so I'm saying you kind of need to have the 8k vanillas in there just to give you that extra power. And it does help against cross rides, which is always nice. Yeah. Fair enough. But this deck unfortunately doesn't go very well because that's your main combo, which can only hit 16. Yeah. So it does become a bit of a pain sometimes. Now your main vanguard booster is Turquoise Blue Terenia. Now she's only 5k, 
which may deter some people, but when she boosts successfully and the attack hits the vanguard, you can soul charge, no, soul blast two, and then yep. bounce a card. Yep. So she is your other main bouncer card to bounce the Kareens, to bounce the Rios, yep. and that will allow you to then soul charge draw, get the extra guard to your hands. It does seem very threatening on the vanguard this deck, because as a booster it has to hit the vanguard, and that has to hit the vanguard as well. Yes. So, yeah, it seems I have to block everything <laughs> to stop everything. Like, <laughs> that is the idea, but what you'll usually have is one column where Kareen or Rio's at the side, where right. it doesn't have to hit the vanguard. I could attack the vanguard with it, you'll let it through, you'll get a trigger, and then that screws up the rest of my attack pattern. So most of the time, what I do is I have one Kareen at the side with no booster, just attack a rear guard, try yeah. and force you to guard it or let you go, and then you're still pressured with the other two attacks. Yeah, so that on one side, that on the other, and that boosting your vanguard, so... Yeah. That. Or if that fails, you've actually got either of them, and that... Another effect I've got to mention about Pacifica, is when you've got four more Bermuda Triangle rearguards, you'll get 3k. Ah, uh, so it's a hard-hitting so. combo there, it's going to bounce that, or that, Yeah, and that. And if you get those combo. behind Pacifica, it's twenty twenty one, which oh. again is threatening. Fair enough. Then we got onto the trigger lineup. Now, this is where I deter from quite a few people. I run the four draws. Right, that seems standard. I run the four crits. That's fine, I didn't see anything wrong there. The four heals. Okay, that's fine. And then I run the four stands as what well. What are you doing, Aaron? <laughs> <laughs> because I'm running, obviously, one of each, I have the entire drive quartet combo, which is cool. It, that also just allows me to sometimes get a 17 if I have to drop a trigger behind anything. Yeah, but the main, card, re main question is, why do I run stands? Well, it's because of my attack pattern. Because I am usually getting a Kareen on the side, attacking with the Vanguard, then the rear guard if I get any triggers, to try and bounce that card. What's great is if I pretty much guaranteed that I'm not going to bounce anything, the fact that I have stands in there will allow me to get an extra attack out of that and possibly further... Neg you. Because yeah, the, the potential problem being is you don't want to bounce something when you haven't already attacked with it. So you're going to have to attack with it first. So the only efficient way to do it is with a stand. That's my view on it. I mean, you can. Bermudas do have extra draws and extra crits, which you could easily just put six and six. And that would easily give you extra pressure with the crits and draws in there. So you're a lot more aggressive on your build. Right, now the starting Vanguard for the deck that I use is... Bermuda Triangle Cadet Weddle. Now you do have an alternative of Shizuka, which, uh, but I'll go over Weddle first. What Weddle does is that she's just a 5k pioneer, so when she comes out, she goes back there. She's a nice booster to start with for the first two turns, so you, know, you, know, you get decent attacks for the first few turns. And when you want to get rid of her, you can just pop her into the soul and then bounce any unit from your field to your hand. For free, it's no counter blast cost, which is what I like about her. So a lot of the cards in your deck, you just bounce it and it's just a replacement, basically. Yeah, pretty much. Plus one. But if you usually wait to get Kareen or something, then you can get a plus one out of it from the effect. Well, it's a one-for-one one trade, but yeah. Now you could use Shizuka instead. What she is, is she's the um, grade three searcher. So comes out 4k, counter blast one, put in soul, check top five cards, look for a grade three. Now you could use that and get a bit more consistency in looking for Pacifica to make sure you ride it. But the fact that it's into your counter blast, it's only a 4k. And it's, and it's a neg if you don't find it, which is why yeah. I've gone off. Yeah, so that's why I personally don't use Shizuka and I prefer Weddle. Now, come extra booster 6 when you get the cross ride, it might be a lot better to use, but we'll see how that happens when that comes out. As with the grade freeze, the alternate options you have are Flora's, Lena, and. I always thought that was Cream. Saram. Never mind. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Now, basically, Lena's made a vanguard, so it's a backup vanguard, so she's more orientated to her own build, I'd say, but you could use her as a backup if you don't have enough Pacificas or something, so personally, I wouldn't use that. It does what? Um, she's like Sakia for or oracles. She bounces everything back to your hand. Okay, so but there isn't bounce, much okay. of her points, in, unless you bring the Weddle back or something. Or the great one-two combo. So, yeah. yeah. Floris, on the other hand, now, she does what the grade one does. What the grade one does, but as a grade three, when it hits, soul blast two to bounce something. She's a lot more useful, but the problem is that she'll eat up into the grade three space. And personally, I prefer running more Korean so I can actually find something to actually bounce. But she is still a very good alternative. You don't have the soul either, to be fair. Karem is the cat blast one to get three k when it attacks. 
could be used again ease up into your grey free lineup so you're not likely to find the stuff you actually do want and even then it's only for a turn to hit yeah, 20k it. plus and it eats into your counter blast again so she's good. more orientated towards the Revier build in my opinion but so, again there's nothing stopping you actually putting it in there to get a lot more power into your attacks yes yeah, so that's power over and you've gone for combo orientated hand advantage as for grade twos again it's an issue of there's not enough space your pearl is a key your aqua's kind of key because you need that you know that need that 10 up front to do an attack and stuff the only one that is maybe changeable is the rio now you've got the special interceptor which is a good alternative in my opinion the other ones when it's cool is like there's one where you call it, it gets 2k to something for a turn or you've got one that's vanguard only when it attacks if you drive track a grade three you can bounce something they're a bit situational and I prefer using something like this. Personally, I use the Rio because it allows me to have more things that I can bounce to get the plus rather than just having to focus on the Kareens. With grade ones, you've got a little bit more leeway in what you can actually do. I mean, you do really need the Pearlers to go with the Pearler. You need the perfect guards, obviously. You could probably, I wouldn't advise knocking it down to three. Tirahena, I still think, is a must. Free, maybe a bit too much, though, because obviously you don't want a 5 boosting your rear guards. It just wants to be your vanguard, etc. So your other options, really, you've only got Prism on Water Motoa, which is just a black or dark cat clone from OTT. You'll see both play some draw card when she's played. And you've got Navy Dolphin Amora, which is just the airmo clone, um, discard draw. Personally, I wouldn't use Amur because she's only 6. Uh, the problem comes when you're boosting things like... Well, basically, you, sw you swap it out for that, if anything. And that, so yeah. that you're going for consistency over your bouncing. And yeah, but the issue things. is, if you're running that, you're losing... Potentially losing that, which means you've lost a card that can bounce. Anything else, you're losing the consistency and power on your rear guards because I only hit for... 15, maybe 14 if you've got a Rio there. It needs to be behind one of your 10Ks. So it needs to be 7 or 8. As for Martoa, okay, you draw a card, but, yeah, but you give I, your I, opponent yeah, a plus as well. I don't like it. The only way it really works is kind of with Lena, so you can do it multiple times and reuse the effects. You know, sort out your field, just drop anything, get quick attacks in, bring them back, etc. Kind of like you do with Sakura. It works a little here. bit specifica though, I guess, because you go put one into the soul all the time, you draw, put one in soul. You might be able to get rid of anything you don't like to draw into. No, I see what you're saying, but I just feel that it personally works better with just a Lena build on her own, like Sakuya does. We play Sakuya, bounce everything, call again, draw cards, and just keep a nice defensive build up. And then we come back to the grade zeros and triggers. Basically, again, my personal preference was to run all four of the drive quartets so that you got. Each one can play off each other and become a 7k booster, which can help in times when you're lacking that boost power because of you've got your perfect guards and your, um, what's it called? La da 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 da. Tirahenia. So they can help because they can become 7k, but again, you can easily take out the crit, and um, not the crit, you can keep the crit, you can take out the stand and pop in the draw and crit, so then you've got a more offensive pushing deck rather than one that's kind of technical with the stands in it. You do have another stand trigger in the lineup, but I don't think you'd want to run more than four, if anything, really. Okay, so that was our Bermuda Triangle deck breakdown. Hopefully this has been informative to you guys. Please feel free to leave a positive or negative response in our comment section, and then we will see you next time.